In front of Ridley's upcoming IPO this week, we've had some new information this morning. With me in the studio, I've got Maria Hedinger, CEO of Ridley. Welcome. Welcome Thank you. back. Thank you. What has happened this past weekend and why? Uh, there are two Swedish publishers uh, that have uh, notified us that they intend uh, to leave their uh, collaboration and remove their content from our platform. They're called Aller and Bonnier. Uh, what I do think is that uh, it's, you know, I'm very disappointed, of course, that they, uh, they're doing this. Uh, I think we've had a great collaboration uh, for many years. Uh, but what it also does is that it's underlined the fact that, uh, you know, we're a global company with 800 publishers in 11 markets. Uh, Sweden is an important market, but uh, Germany is our largest market. We're growing rapidly in all of our geographic markets. UK is also a big market. Uh, so uh, we took a step back and we looked at this. What are the potential implications on Readly as a whole? And uh, we came to the conclusion that it doesn't have a material impact on our ability to grow, our strategy, and we stick to our financial targets. So how big chunk of the Swedish uh, titles are affected uh, if the companies, if the publishers are going to leave because they are not going to leave uh, right away at the moment. I, as I understand, it's uh, Q1 next year, maybe. How many titles of the Swedish um, universe are, are affected by this and uh, how many how many really users are affected globally? Uh, so uh, these titles, uh, they make up 3.8% of our total number of titles globally. 3.8%. Uh, if you compare it only to the Swedish titles, uh, they make up 30.1% of the titles. So that means that uh, approximately 70% of the Swedish titles are unaffected by this news. And uh, if you look at readership, uh, below 1% of our subscribers read exclusively from these titles. If you look at it on a Swedish scale, it's 5.4% that read exclusively only these kind of titles. Um, these, uh, like you mentioned, these uh, agreements, uh, they run out uh, because it, it's a couple of agreements. Um, they uh, run out over a period of time uh, up until uh, second half uh, of next year. So there is no imminent uh, effect. It's not like all of the content uh, that is affected will be removed immediately or anything. It will be gradually during next year. Are there any chance for uh, negotiations during this period and which might make this a, a, a non-problem for the users in the long end? Uh, you said Q1, Q2 next yeah. year. Yeah, you know, uh, this is part of uh, everyday business of a uh, content uh, platform like ours. And, uh, you know, we uh, have had a great collaboration with these uh, publishers for a long time. Uh, our readers obviously enjoy their titles. Uh, so I can only hope that we will come to an understanding so that our readers can continue uh, to read those titles without interruption. Um, you know, it's very early days, so I really would like to sit down with these publishers and have a dialogue with them. And I hope uh, we can get to a conclusion that they either don't leave at all or in the future, who knows, maybe they decide to come back. Uh, that would obviously be my hope and ambition, uh, but it's very early stage right now. Uh, we have experienced in the past, in the UK, for example, and in Germany, uh, that titles or publishers temporarily have removed their content. Uh, and then after a period of time, in those cases, they actually came back. So this is a little bit part of of our everyday business. And that's really the strength of being a global play with 800 publisher partners in, in many countries. We are not vulnerable to what's going on in a single market on, on a larger scale. All right, so you said that 5.4% 5, 5 of the users in Sweden are actually enjoying these magazines exclusively and 0, 0 0.9 on a global basis. Um, Let's talk about your financial goals. Are they impacted by this uh, in the short term or in the long term? So uh, you may recall we have three goals. Uh, one of them is to grow revenue uh, between 30 to 35 percent annually in the midterm. Midterm uh, is often uh, means approximately three years. 
uh, we believe that on a CAGR basis over this time period, we will still meet that goal. Uh, on an individual annual basis, uh, I think it's too early to say exactly the impact it's going to have on 2021. Uh, we still have a, a possibility to, uh, to exceed 30% also in 2021. But I would say that year is a little bit uh, tricky to predict exactly. So that's the only sort of caveat I will give. But on, on an aggregated compounded average, uh, compounded average growth rate perspective, we believe over this period we will still be over 30%. Uh, then there is a, a second financial goal, which is to achieve a gross margin uh, long term of 35%. We are already now reporting a gross margin of 32. We have a track record of increasing gross margin over time. And we feel very confident that this will not impact that in any way. Uh, our third uh, goal is to achieve a positive EBITDA in four to five years. And we also think that, that uh, our ability to achieve that goal is not uh, affected by this. We're a global company uh, in, in many markets. Uh, we can continue to grow in our existing markets, all our markets, and over time, we will also enter new markets. So um, this is uh, part of uh, a day in Ridley's life, I think. And, all right, so cash positive on EBITDA level in four to five years, exactly as you said before, all the financial goals are not impacted. They are they are stuck, uh, <laughs> as you said before. Um, you have planned for your upcoming IPO Thursday this week on the September 17th. Are the date affected? Do you think that you will have to postpone the IPO? I don't have any reason to believe that it will not uh, progress as planned uh, with first day of trading on uh, September 17th. What we know today... Uh, doesn't change that as far as I know right now. Mm. And for those of our investors looking at this and thinking about how this will affect you in the short term versus the long term, what do you have to say to our uh, our customers that, that are interested in your IPO um, and receive this news for now? Well, I think uh, one aspect to add, uh, which is also evident from our press release, is that our cornerstone investors, uh, you may recall there were eight uh, cornerstone investors who announced uh, their commitment to to subscribe uh, in the amount of total 390 million uh, and they have all confirmed they still believe in our uh, this growth case long term growth journey that really is on and that they uh, remain committed to this IPO uh, so that's something uh, i think additional to just mention here all right so no cold feet for the cornerstone investors maria thank you very much for coming here and updating us on the on the on the news today thank you thank you very much for looking at this